It's Halloween! I had never seen this damn movie before. It came out before I was born, so I'd never just gone back to it. Never really had reason to. And there was one main reason that dissuaded me from actually going and watching the full thing. One time I was in a hotel and it happened to be playing. And it was at the part that I know now. There's that little creepy lady who comes in. They're doing all that whisper talk. And for some reason, she really creeped me out. So I just I switched the channel to like King of the Hill or something. <laughs> and then just never went back to it. Because she always she seemed weird. So finally though... This particular Halloween season, I am in deep with the festivities. I have decorate. Well, I didn't decorate, but there are a lot of people around me who decorated some just so elaborately that I feel like I need to celebrate in some other way. I got two giant bags of candy. I'm not going to be here, but I'm just going to place them like on the front of my house and see what happens. And I watched Poltergeist. This was uh, a very, very special movie. There are a number of iconic scenes that came from this that I saw parodied. And it was made 1982. We'll get to the like nuts and bolts of it actually after I talk about it because there are some significant things to clear up about uh, the movie itself. Anyway, the first thing I want to say is, uh, okay, I know it's a terrible, horrible, terrifying thing to think about something like this happening to your young children, uh, but I'm going to say that they at least somewhat deserved it. Or at least there's an argument for that they deserved it. For two reasons. Number one, they're like hippie burnouts. Like, why are they? They're sitting in the bedroom making dumb jokes to each other, smoking weed, and it was really annoying. You're adults. You have responsibilities. Don't do that kind of thing. Uh, number two, which is infinitely more important than that, like, I will forgive the first one, but the second one I cannot forgive, is the guy, while they're, it's late, and the kids are all in bed, and they're just hanging out, and he's flipped around on the bed, and his feet are in the pillows. Like, you can't do that. Nobody can do that. You give kids a pass because they're idiots, but as an adult, you don't put your feet in the pillows. Even teenage girls, who are the least discerning and thoughtful human beings on earth, (laughs) even them, they do that thing where they put their feet straight up in the air instead of laying them on the pillows. I was so shocked and terrified by this moment. It It was difficult to continue watching the movie. But at that point, I legitimately was like, anything bad that happens to you for the rest of this movie, you deserve it. I'm going to root for the ghost, for the monster now, because you did this. So I just want to get those things out of the way. That's, That's my mind state going into this. Then we have the opening family scenes, the obligatory scenes where the family's all happy together. And honestly, these are my favorite scenes in most horror movies. <laughs> it's like when the family's just fine and they're making fun of each other and you're getting to know how they relate to each other. When this is done well, you could watch an entire movie of just this. It's actually shocking how good this can be in some cases. Here it was pretty good. It was just, uh, they were watching football with the guys and there were some shenanigans that happened related to that and it's so funny to see uh, the technology woes people just do not understand nowadays the kinds of technology issues that happened in the past they're trying to watch football and the channel just keeps flipping randomly and it's because the neighbor has a a tv the same tv with the same remote so it just (laughs) it gets crossed and there's nothing you can do about it that was a thing that happened in the past that's crazy and then the the bird dies, so the mom has to try to flush the bird before the little girl sees. And the little girl finds out, and they have to have a funeral for the thing. And they've got one, another daughter who's older. She's getting into the teen years. And her personality trait is that she eats a lot of vegetables, apparently. But somehow she's also built like a linebacker. It's strange. And then the boy's always, uh, he was just climbing on things, right? Anyway, so you just, you have this family dynamic, and the, the kids... Just love, I don't know, breaking things and throwing things at each other and just being little jerks to each other, which I've seen firsthand. That rings true. But it's just a nice, happy family. And they have the TV and the TV show static. And I wouldn't have my... If we just stop the movie there and then I'll move on to the next movie where there's just a happy family getting along with each other. (laughs) It's just good, you know? When it's a family, I feel bad for the things that happen. When the protagonist in a horror movie is a single guy, especially, or a single lady or uh, asshole teenagers, yeah, cut them up, whatever. (laughs) But when it's a family, I feel bad about it. I don't want them to have to go through that stuff. So I I pushed through, though. And I remembered that the guy had put his feet on the pillows earlier, so that reinvigorated my hatred for them. 
And then you get the first major special effect. I think this happens for Yeah, I think this happens first. You get this... Uh, it's this digital hand that comes out of the TV, and it does not hold up in any way, shape, or form. It just looks like a cartoon. And so that was a little bit annoying. But the little girl, actually... She's actually a decent actress. She doesn't have a whole lot of range, but, but she commits herself to what's going on, and the little boy, too. And it's it, it's believable. It's much appreciated. But you got this cartoon hand that comes out. doesn't look great, but it eventually looks better. So you try to buy it, and the little girl... I remember at this point she says, they're here. And I know that's been parodied all over the place. I didn't know that that's what this was, that that was from this. But it was at that moment that I was like, oh, just, just take her. You know, if I get a creepy little girl as a child, just the ghost can have that one. I'll get another one. Cause that's weird. You don't need to be doing that kind of thing. And she says it's the TV people. Cause the, the lady, Her mom later says, you said they're here, uh, who did you mean? And she says, it was the TV people. And I thought, you know, George Clooney or something shows up, but it was, it was a really creepy thing to say, the TV people, really? And then there are, like, weird shenanigans. They handle this really well, though. So there are strange things that start happening. You have all this where more subtle things happen before the more uh, undeniable things happen. And that's a standard horror movie trope. But in this, they play it differently because its chairs start moving and stacking by themselves. And at one point, the mother is brings the the father in and she's look at this look at this and the chair moves by itself and she's jumping up and down and so excited about it which was an interesting take on it they are somewhat inculpated in the situation because they don't take it seriously in the beginning they think it's just cool so i i like that i like that little twist on that on that trope but then you get you know things really start happening there's this big storm and there's something nice about this too because it covers the supernatural events because it's a storm and then a tree comes through the window and grabs the kid. The limbs on a tree, these big scary looking limbs. But it's still associated with a storm. You know, trees going through windows is something obviously that can happen in a storm. So it's something that makes it more grounded and believable and enjoyable because it has that real life correlate. Uh, Just like the TV in itself. People who don't know, you know, nowadays you have no idea. You just watch everything on streaming and it just goes to the next episode. You don't have hours of static in the middle of the night like you used to back in the day, which was a weird, creepy thing. But still, it's a real thing and so it has some kind of real world correlate that is used as a springboard to supernatural stuff and i really appreciate that i think that's a really smart way to do it so from here though uh and the ghost thing uses a strat here like a distraction (laughs) it takes the kid the one kid out the window with the tree thing and while everybody's going to try to save him it grabs the girl so that's uh, that's a pretty smart pretty crafty little ghost going on here It grabs the girl and takes her into the closet and then they're running around looking for the girl, can't find her, and then she starts speaking through the TV. Awesome. I mean, that's good stuff. That's good, enjoyable stuff. And then it's not just, oh my gosh, this thing happened, let's call somebody, and we figure it out two days later. They are going on and on and on trying to figure this stuff out, staying in this horrible house that has a lot of weird stuff going on for a while. It goes on and on until they can get somebody in and then they have to get somebody else in. So it's more enjoyable. And then you got the whisper scenes where they're all whispering to each other, which gives it a nice lull. And it, there's a pacing thing that makes sense here. And there's this crew who's investigating and, and taking video and trying to figure out where the ghosts are and how to find the little girl. But they need to bring the little, the tiny lady with the weird voice. They need to bring her in as an expert. And she tells this whole mythology about what's going on here. And I thought it was really interesting. Even though she's telling it instead of saying it, I thought that was way better. I mean, telling telling it instead of staying it, what a stupid thing to say. <laughs> telling it instead of showing it. In the movie, it's just telling you what's going on. I thought that was way better because it left a lot of mythology to the imagination. Which was great later because they do this whole thing where there's a portal that goes through one area and out another area in the house. And I thought at some point, uh, what you expect is that, okay, one character, they do the rope thing, which I've seen parody too, where it's going in one end and out the other end. And somebody's got to hold on to this rope and go into the nether world so they could save the girl and then pop out, you know, via the rope. And I thought when she went in this deal that we'd see what that other world looks like. 
But they didn't do that. They completely left that out and just went straight to, you know, they had some intense stuff going on. And one of the best effects in the movie, because a lot of them were pretty terrible. But this one, from the side at least, not from the front, but from the side when this giant thing pops out. It looked pretty cool. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. But they're holding the ropes and then uh, they pull her out the other end. She was able to get her daughter and they fall through and they've got just covered in afterbirth, which is awesome touch. And they have to put her, put them in boiling water water or something to, to save them and they wake up all covered in this stuff and the little girl nails the performance in this moment and it was just thoroughly enjoyable i mean overall thoroughly damn enjoyable i thought and the the acting all around was pretty good uh, it's some of the writing was excellent and like the mother really went in on this character and <laughs> the father had this quality where he's really trying to save his family but he just doesn't know what to do he's at a loss a lot of the time and it's got uh, you know some other aspects of the story they built on an indian burial ground i think this is where this started <laughs> they built on an indian burial ground and so there's this selfish capitalist boss that gets his comeuppance because he decided to do this. Because he's The guy's like talking to him. He's like, you built on a burial ground, but you just moved the headstones. You didn't move the bodies. Are you crazy? So it's got some ideas wrapped up in it about capitalism and, and the sacredness of the dead. And there are some other secondary ideas about, you know, what television does to your children. And how that could affect them and pull them in. Of course, they need to remake it now. It'll it'll be horrible if they do, but they need to remake it now with smartphones because those have a much worse effect on children today than anything the television ever did. So there are some background ideas, but it really, it's not thematically complex. It's not emotionally complex. It was just an overall well-done, enjoyable movie. And that that's one that it's just, it's fun to watch. It was just enjoyable to watch. So... After this, uh, they save the girl and, uh, you know, they clean off the afterbirth and <laughs> the little tiny ladies, oh, it's done, it's over, the place is clean now, uh, while they've got a pile of afterbirth in the living room, but still. So the next scene is them just packing like crazy, putting it all in the truck, and they're frantic, and they're like, okay, we're done, and they're in good spirits. But he has to go tell his boss off. That's like the last thing that he has to do. He tells him, don't fall asleep in this place. You know, I'll be back soon. We'll get out of here, and that'll be that. And here I'm, are you kidding? There's no way on earth, I do not believe the end of this movie is canon, that there's no way on earth if for months their child was lost in a wall or something in this house, there is no way that they would stay another night in this place. They would be in a hotel immediately. I don't care. They'd sleep in the car. It does not matter. But there's no way on earth that they would stay here. Uh, also, I think they swapped out the butch daughter for a different daughter. Because later, she's... I swear she looked like a linebacker. She was built like a dump truck when you first see her. And then later, she's wearing a dress and she just looks normal. And I, I don't know. I feel like they swapped her out or they did one of those composite face things. There's no way that's the same girl. So they stay one more night. Of course, a whole bunch of stuff goes down. This weird looking, not great looking skeleton monster attacks the mother. And uh, they do that thing where she crawls on the roof, which looked great. The closet tries to suck them in again. I don't know why on earth they would let them stay in this room ever. You know, <laughs> at least make them stay in a different room if they're going to stay in the house. But uh, yeah, it almost gets sucked up. Mom saves them both. Dad returns, confronts his boss. They get in the car as they're <laughs> they're trying to drive away. The other girl gets back. She gets out of like a sports car. She has a big hickey on her neck. <laughs> and she just starts screaming. And the little boys, drive away, dad, drive away. <laughs> like she's she's gone. She's lost it. We can't save her. <laughs> And I don't know if that was deliberate to make it seem like the little boy was trying to <laughs> just leave his sister. But, uh, yeah, it made me laugh. I laughed out loud at that part. Uh, but she gets in. They all drive away as chaos erupts all around them. Uh, you know, there's fire spewing out of water. Not water fountains, but the, <laughs> the things that firefighters use to fight the fire. Hydrants. Jesus Christ. And then that is the actual end. They go to a hotel and last little joke, they push the TV, roll it right out of the room and close the door. Uh, it's just, like I said, it's just a thoroughly enjoyable movie. I totally understand why this was such a big deal when it came out and why it's been parodied so much. 
But I really miss that shared experience now. It, before, you would have a limited number, number of movies that would come out, limited number of entertainment sources. So people would have this shared collective base from which to, you know, understand these kinds of jokes and, and have these cultural touch points that, that they all knew about and... We just don't have that so much anymore. You know, it was like Game of Thrones. Was that the last one that people shared? I didn't watch it, but was that the last one that people shared? Where was everybody around the same time was having the same experience? Because I feel like even good shows nowadays, as they come out, you know, you watch it. And then when you get around to it, you watch a YouTube video about it. But uh, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't feel as shared anymore. And it's so disperse because there's so many options for entertainment that... We just don't have that shared experience anymore. Anyway, yeah, that's that's Poltergeist. It was a great Halloween movie. It made me feel in the spirit. And that's why I got the good candy this year. But that's that. Did you guys see it? Did you enjoy it? What did you not like about it? What did you like about it? Hope all is well. That's about it. I'll see you on the next one. All right, bye.